The Living Building Challenge really is inspired by this vision that buildings can give more than they take. We're not creating a habitat at some cost to the planet. We call it a living building because that's how life operates. Uh, plants and animals are actually contributing to the web of life that they're part of and so that's the vision that buildings do the same thing. You're not only addressing technical performance but you're also trying to make a place that people love, want to be around and feel good about. So at first the Living Building Challenge it, it seemed very large and um, hugely difficult but what we did was we sat down and we thought about all the pieces that make up the Living Building Challenge. And we broke them down and we looked at them in a vacuum, each to themselves, and came up with a strategy and a plan for each one. And that, you know, that came down to a water strategy, energy strategy, material strategy. So then the Living Building Challenge actually was, we saw it as an opportunity, more than a challenge at all. I often get asked, you know, well, what was the hardest thing? It's obvious what the hardest thing is, it's finding the stuff. Initially you look around and you don't find any options uh, that are not unhealthy. From a materials point of view, we took the approach of keeping it simple. And so you'll see on the outside of this building that there are precast concrete bands and the stone. Uh, and as you look at it, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just, and it's very durable and it only comes from 18 miles away. Same material on the windowsill, same material on the patio wall, same material on those sitting blocks out in the, in the landscape. So we tried to apply that to as many materials in the building, that if they were doing one job, could they do two or three other jobs at the same time? We embraced a super insulated envelope that was very tight in terms of air infiltration. Uh, we focused on getting an R40 value of insulation for the walls and an R60 um, performance level on the roof. The properties that we get from the Prosico uh, Cat5, the particularities of that air vapor barrier product are, are you know, probably the single most important piece of this building. You can't see any of it. We've got nice stone and wood and you know, good windows, but back in there where the physics is happening is, uh, is so critical. Finding materials that achieve the function that, that we need them to uh, but to do so uh, in ways that don't compromise the health of occupants. And, and that's a real challenge. You know, this was the very beginning. Nobody knew what this was. Nobody, most of the manufacturers wouldn't talk about what was in their products. And, but Prosico was the company that said, well, why do you ask? Why? Do you, why, why? And, you know, that's how it started. And, and you, know, the, you know the rest of the story that they offered up a product with the same warranty that took the phthalates out. Phthalates came out of more products. Because the Living Building Challenge sets the bar so high and says, let's, let's actually coat surfaces here in ways that, that are not unhealthy. Um, it, it stimulates innovations. Like the whole materials thing I find very analogous in the building industry to uh, like what the food industry has gone through in the last 10 years, where people are starting to realize that they really should care about what they're eating. Like, yeah, we should probably not have carcinogens in our building. That seems right. Like, I can't see that backfiring. On a day like today, you feel like this is what you were born to do. This is why you became an architect. Pushing the limits, pushing the edge, and doing it in a community of people who are all trying to work together. To walk in on a day like today and see this group here who's excited about this and actually talking about how this is the not only the right thing to do, but how, how it's going to transform how this work gets done, that's incredible. You can't describe what that's like. So I mean I'm just overjoyed by that, that piece of it. But. It's a very deep experience to build this building because you know that we know that we've done everything we can, the materials, uh, the systems, so that it can have a hundred year service life and uh, never require public water, never require uh, net electricity. And uh, what, what an idea. your eyes and picture a sustainable building. But because we dared to be different and tried to do something that would still be relevant at the end of its design life 250 years from now, we've garnered a great deal of attention and, 